In this presentation, we're going to look at the balance sheet here in relationship to the income statement, and we're going to look at the, the accounting equation here, assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. First thing we have to understand here is that we have a whole number of accounting transactions that have happened between the assets and the liabilities, and then those two accounts that get transferred over here into the revenue and expenses, and they get accumulated, and then they get closed out at the end of the period here to an income summary account, and then that income summary account flows into retained earnings. What I want to look at here is just the uh, when we do get a transaction over from our assets or liabilities, and um, the revenues and expense accounts get uh, credited or debited. In this case, let's, let's look at a credit here. We got a credit to revenues of $1,000, so to close that, we debit revenues by 1000 credit the income summary account. To close that, we debit it by 1000 and then it ends up uh, crediting retained earnings on the balance sheet. So it flowed from the net income statement to the retained earnings. So a credit here in revenues means a credit here in retained earnings. And uh, in case of the expenses, we did the same thing here. We had a debit amount, credit it to close it, debit income summary, credit to close it, debit retained earnings. I guess what we're looking at here is if we've got a credit over here, we're going to have a credit here regardless. If it's an expense, it's going to be accredited to retained earnings. If it's a debit on this side, it's going to be a debit here to retained earnings. Okay, let's look at this accounting equation here in terms of either an increase in assets or a decrease in assets. Say we had an increase in assets here of $200 debited and a corresponding credit entry would have been directly to a liability account or it would have been to credit liabilities. It increases it by $200. So the accounting equation stays in effect. Both sides went up by $200. Now if the asset account here involved the net income account, uh, we would uh, net income accounts. We'd credit revenues, say for two hundred dollars, or credit expenses, reduce expenses for two hundred dollars, and then these these uh, net income accounts flow back into the balance sheet here in retained earnings at the end of the period. So credit balances here translate over to credit uh, balances here. So uh, in case of revenues increase, we would see a uh, increase in revenue, uh, retained earnings. In case of a decrease in expenses, we'd also see a re uh, increase in retained earnings, and that keeps this the assets balanced with the liabilities. Both went up here, and they'd have a choice here of either 200 either expenses or revenues here. Now, if we go down here and have a decrease in assets, we have the same same thing only in opposite of credit assets here. Uh, debit liabilities, if it was involved that, so both of them decreased by $400. Now, if we go over here, it was either a revenue or expense, we would debit, uh, reduce revenues or increase expenses, and at, at the end of the period, it would flow back in to um, the balance sheet here with uh, the retained earnings account. So debits translate directly over to debits here, so that would reduce the retained earnings and keep it in balance here with the assets. Now remember it's only one of these four hundred dollars not both of them. Now let's look at liabilities and see how it affects the accounting equation. Say we had a two hundred dollar increase in liabilities. So you credit it, liabilities go up by two hundreds and let's say it affected the asset side here. So we would debit assets here for two hundred. So both of them went up counting it by the same amount, so the accounting equation balances. Say liabilities affected uh, the revenues and expenses, so we had the $200 credit here increase it, so we would have a debit decrease here on this side. So those debits trans translate over to debits and retained earnings. So we have, uh, looking here at what has happened here, retained earnings went down well, by you sure I see the two hundred dollars here, and then liabilities went up by two hundred, so they offset each other, so the equation stays in balance.
Now let's look here if we have a decrease in liabilities. So we debit the decrease and say it affected an asset account, so we would credit assets. So both of them went down here. Counting equation stays in balance. Say the liabilities affected revenues and expenses. So we would have our debit in the liabilities, so the credit would be in the revenues and expenses, say here. And that translates over to a credit in retained earnings. So when we compare this, the retained earnings to the current liabilities, you see you had an increase in retained earnings, a decrease in liabilities. So the equation stays in balance. They balance each other out here. Now let's look at changes in the same side of the accounting equation. Say we have an uh, increase in assets here, a debit of $100, and then the offsetting entry would be to a credit of another asset by $100. So they offset each other. The accounting equation would sit, stay in balance. There's no net change in assets. Same thing with liabilities. Say we had a credit increase here of $100, then we, we've got a... Um, debit decrease of $100 and another liability as the offsetting entry. So they cancel each other out. There's no net change in liability, so the accounting equation remains in balance. Okay, let's look at a contra asset here as an effect on the accounting equation. So let's say we had an increase here in a contra asset by $200. That offsets our uh, a regular asset here. We had, a, say, $1,000 here, offset by 200 so it was decreased by $200, the asset. Now those contra asset charges get moved over here to net income, either as revenue or expenses, so the credit on the contra asset here gets offset by a debit either of $200, either revenues. And then these get transferred right over to retained earnings as debits here, so we had a decrease here of either of these two amounts, or debit and retained earnings. So we had a decrease Decrease here in uh, liabilities and stockholders' equity of $200, and if we go back over here into the asset side, we also had a decrease by $200. So, uh, accounting equation balances. Okay, let's look at a contra liability and its effect on the accounting equation. Say we've had an increase in contra liabilities of $400. There's a debit amount here, so against the credit of liability or the liability account, $1,000. So you can see it decreases the liability account by $400. Now those contra liabilities get charged off either the revenues expenses. In this case, it would be a credit to either revenues expenses for $400, and then at the end of the period, they get transferred over here to retained earnings. It's really it the credit here of either of the $400. So you can see here retained earnings goes up by $400 and the liability goes down here by 400 or decreases liabilities here by 400. So we uh, they, these changes cancel each other out so um, there's no change up here and the accounting equation balances.